Hey, this is Tim Pierce. I've always loved the Hendrix Octavia lead tone. I'm going to use this Dunlop Octavio to show you how I get that tone. I'm also going to show you some of the highlights from the solo I just played. Click the link below if you want to check out the masterclass. So let's talk about the gear first. I'm plugged into my new, for me, Vox AC15 that I just got. Bill Nash Stratocaster, uh, heavily distressed with Lawler pickups, the loud ones. And the Octavio, which is the, the whole point of this video, really. This pedal, I had the original version of this. I had a Tycho Bray Octavia. And I have it somewhere, I think it's broken, but Dunlop has been able to reissue these with total accuracy at this point. And there's one available right now that's black and white, and it's, it's, I've checked with George Trips, it's literally, it's the same circuit. So you can pretty much buy a new one and know that you're gonna get the sound. And what the sound is, something that on Band of Gypsies just blew me away, um, this kind of squawk and, and uh, these overtones that would happen, Oh, and also, it's, I think it's very important to choose the neck pickup for this thing. The, the Hendrix would get these... This a kind of expression that I'd never heard from anything else. And it really speaks when you use your fingers or thumb. It speaks well with a pick, too, but the, the thumb... Just get stuff... It to me is so expressive, I'd never heard anything like it. So the, I think the trick with this thing is to not turn it up all the way. The sweet spot for me seems to be right around here. I have it at about two o'clock. You can pull it up to three o'clock too. And then when you turn it all the way up, it's a little too much fuzz for me. If I back it down to, to you know, if, if we're looking from one to 10 here, if I back it down to nine. I mean, it's good for a really saturated sound. But it's a little past that squeak. Oh, maybe not. It is a little past this really incredible overtone zone. Like a really musical ring modulator. Get surprises from it that you're not expecting. Let me try turning it down. Still really good. But I think if you if you end up with this pedal, the thing to do is find your own sweet spot, depending on the guitar. I think it's somewhere in the middle here. So this is really an octave fuzz. But it's so much more than that to me because it surprises you. The way you touch it, especially with your fingers from the right hand. If you set it on the neck pickup and you use your fingers or your thumb, you get surprised by these these events that happen, sometimes an octave, sometimes something that sounds like a ring modulator, it, uh, it's random the way it responds. And that's one of the things I like best about it. And it's also really expressive. And touch sensitive. And I don't know if you've noticed or not, but anytime you play two notes together, you get random surprises just with that. Three notes, everything blends in an unusual way. So let's look at the music. This is You Got Me Floating" by Hendrix. And Hendrix, uh, aside from all of his, uh, you know, otherworldly gifts, he was a great riff writer. So the basis for this riff is down here. Five. Three up to five. Open E, chromatic up, I'm gonna go slow. And a lot 
of times with riffs, I like to do all downstrokes. It, it sounds a certain, it sounds more rock to me. <laughs> And the way I handled it up here was with my thumb. So I'm at 12 with my third finger mashed down. And I go from 10 to 12 on 4 and 5. Just for convenience, when it comes to the low E, I just hit the open one. Even though I'm an octave up. And then 10, 11, 12 on 5 and 6. Depending on how hard or soft you strike with your thumb, you get radically different harmonics. So you can play with that and kind of strike it with different strengths with your thumb. Based on this. Also sounds good with a pick, but you get all those, those different random events when you use your thumb. So let's look at my first departure from the riff. I'm playing an A minor 7. I've turned the, the unit off so you can actually hear the notes really well. If I bring my index finger up one fret, I get the Hendrix chord, E augmented ninth. E7 plus 9. E dominant 7 plus 9. But this is really E minor 7. And I switch to the pick. So let me turn this thing back on. Use my thumb. I use the sustain of that note to give me time to actually kind of place the pick. So the sustain of that last note allows me to do what I gotta do to get the pick in the right place between my thumb and my index finger over here. So what happens with this is I always return to the root note. And what it does is as I add notes, the harmonics change and kind of get even more random. And you really hear the ring modulator kind of nature of this. So I start on the A here at 12, I go to 10, back to 12, 12 here, back to 12, 13 here, back to 12, and then finally I hammer from 10 to 12 on the high E string to finish it out. Now check that out, I've backed off the volume pedal and so it's barely hitting the pedal and it's even a new world of different kind of harmonics, it's a clean version. So every time you do it, it's going to speak a little differently. And for me, the trick was to kind of try and get that last note strong. Because everything before it is so thick. Now next, this riff actually starts before the downbeat. So I have to join the riff late. So if I go... I come in on the downbeat and pick up the riff while it's already in process, which is... So I lose the... to come in on... And that's something, I don't know if you do it that much, but that's something to pay attention to, that you can stay in... Uh, you, can, you can make an exit and, and show up at the riff late as long as you come in in the right place. And then now I walk up pentatonically. Let's listen. So this is it. And that's a three fret bend, which is kind of kind of cool to do right there. I'm up at the 12th fret, so it gets easier to do those big bends up here. Harder to do down here. So here's what I do. I hammer, 10 to 12. 
hammer 10 to 12 again on the D string. So first on the A string, and then on the D string, and then I slide up. Now I'm at 14, play at 12, strike at 14, but I don't stay there. The minute I strike, I pull. And I pull three frets to match the pitch. Up here at 17, so here we go. And I go 12 to 14 and strike twice. And one of my favorite things that happens after that, there's a little noise that happens before I move up the neck. Let me show you that. Those things, grab them when you can, because uh, they're great. <laughs> Especially with an effect like this, it just squawks. It's a really nice thing. Now I'm way up high in the neck, but it's just A minor up here, pentatonic. Now these three notes have to sustain into each other. So you want this note to last all the way till you strike this note and this note to last all the way till you strike this note and bend. So make sure they all join. And there I take advantage of a double stop, which I know is gonna squawk in a good way. Still staying A minor pentatonic. So now I go back down the neck. Kind of here to the 12th fret. Still A minor pentatonic, really strictly. Little minor major bend there. I'm seeing the A minor chord right there. And then I reform the A minor 7, but I only shoot for this double stop part of it right here at 12 and 13. And I get a really good squawk because it's, it's a strong double stop. With the Octavia, it really squawks nicely. And you really hear the octave up nature of the pedal on this. Now I move down the neck even further to this position one A minor. Let's see what happens. So I pull up at eight to 10, and then a bar at five, and roll. Make sure everything's smooth and connected. And this blues lick. And that's pulling from five to seven. Let's see what's next. More pentatonic blues. Here we are at five, three. Slide down from five to three. Let's listen to this whole phrase again. Pull right there from five up to seven. One more time slow. Now by hitting that open string at the end of this phrase, See how my, how my hand is free? I can come up the neck and do something really far away from there. So it really starts here. The end of the previous riff is also the beginning of the new riff. So I'm going to think of it that way. I do the pull and the open A. And then I have all the time in the world, well, I have a little bit of time, to come up here and start this. 
and that is basically a piece of a C chord or an A minor chord. We're here at F 15 and 14. Double stop. D string and A string. And then as I've done also in this thing, I return to the root each time. This time the root is the open A. Now I move to the next piece of this C shape. That's 14 and 12. And the next piece. And the last piece. Now it's a C shape, but it's also A minor 7th. All you have to do is change the bass. Same chord. The way this thing sounds when you turn down the volume, that's the volume pedal backed away. Check it out. It's like a beautiful ring modulator. Anyway. One more time. And one more. At speed. Now I'm going to show you the fast style of playing in a very general way. I tend to use three fingers for most of this, and it's all hammering on. The way I start the fast riff, I'm seeing A minor up here, but I'm dipping below. I'm here at 15, 17, and 19, and I, I, I kind of take a liberty here. Instead of playing an A natural minor, I play an A Dorian, which is just the, the, the natural six rather than the flat six. That would be natural minor, and this is just simply A Dorian. Because there's only drums and bass in the background, I can get away with kind of changing scales kind of at liberty. So the way this speed works, it's a hammer-on over three frets and two whole steps. It's really that simple, and I come back down. So if you want to practice this, just try and make every note even, every note the same volume, try and make every note speak, and do it as fast as you can. That's about as fast as I can do it. A lot of people are much faster. And then when I continue on, it might be a three note spread also, generally three note spreads, but I'm obeying the A, a minor scale, natural minor or A Dorian. So if you just visualize the scale and do a lot of these spreads, like here's one down here. It's really the same thing each time. It's three notes up or three notes down. It's hammer-ons or pull-offs. And obeying every, you know, any scale you want. Like if I was in A major, I literally could do the same thing. I'm just using three note flurries. going up and going down, hammer-ons and pull-offs. So that's really it, it's random. And I might throw in some chromatics, I might throw in a couple of blues notes, little connectors, and it's something that I just, I just go as fast as I can and try not to think about it. <laughs> I suggest you do the same.